Okay, well, welcome everyone to this uh, umpty umpth meeting of the Energy and Climate Action Committee in Amherst. Um, let's see, we're coming up on a retreat, at which time I will put together some sort of a statement to say at the beginning of each of these meetings so that our purpose is a little more focused. Uh, but for now, let's just get started with the agenda. Um, and we need a note taker. And I think Don, I actually went back through the last half dozen or so. Um, Michael and Tony need to do it at some point, but I think Don, we should ask you one more time first and then Michael or Tony next time. It's fine. Is that okay? That's All fine. Right. Cool. So um, Don, if you would take notes and the first thing on the agenda is always reviewing the minutes from last time. I found one, I'll, I'll bring them up in a second. Um, Where'd they go? Here they are. Let me make this bigger. I found one thing to change. Jesse's name is Jesse in one place and Selman in others. It needs to be, we use last names oh. by, by convention here. So let Got me it. share this. Minutes share. And this is the one place where I found an occurrence of Jesse's name. I can't okay. see that happening Five. anywhere else. But I could Yeah, I thought I had caught them all. So <laughs> other than that, I thought they were very nice notes. Very useful. Reminded me of something that I needed to do that I forgot to do. Um any other here I can go back up here. That was the um, attendance from last time, which I think is right. And then got the sustainability festival coming up in the retreat this Sunday. Hopefully we'll have a grant announcement this week if we're lucky. Any other comments on the minutes? No. Nope. If not, if somebody would like to move to accept them as they are, the one change. Um, can we actually close them first before we do that? For the vote, yeah. Um, let me go ahead and close this. Anyone else need them open any longer? Oh no, this is the computer that loses the... I'll close the window and then it will go away. <laughs> there we go. The stop share button has moved off to another screen and I can't get it to come back and that screen is currently detached. So <laughs> I can't stop sharing without closing oh. the window. So is there a motion to accept minutes? Sure. No. Yeah. Don moves. Anyone second? I second. Thanks, Tony. Stephanie, you want to do okay. the vote? Yep. Just writing down who's second. Okay. Um, and I just need your vote in no particular order. Allison? Yes. Roof? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Ising? Yes. McElrath? Yes. Okay. Minutes are approved. Now, one question. I know that Dwayne is not here today, but I don't remember hearing about Laura. Is Laura not here today? I just checked and I don't see anything from her. So I'm not sure. She might, maybe she's just going to show up late. Jesse is going to be late. He's coming, but he's just, uh, he'll okay. arrive around five o'clock. Good, good, good. So we'll have a we'll have a couple more people coming. That's good. Yes. Um, all right. So at this point, uh, we open up for public comment. Any comments at the beginning of today's meeting? Raise your virtual hand. If so, and 
Julian, oh, hi, Julian and Sarah. Okay. Julian and Sarah will be speaking later, or Julian will be speaking later. Okay. In that case, let's move on to updates. Um, Tony, you have anything for us yet for um, transportation? I don't have any updates. However, I am planning after the retreat to attend one of the um, transportation committee meetings. And following on that, I'll explore some of the ways in which Elevate, the online or uh, the on-campus energy transition fellows who are also working on transportation or clean energy initiatives around transportation um, can think about providing some educational series to push in for other initiatives. Um, and then I'll also look at the uplift bike system more closely. I wanted to wait until after the retreat just so I got caught up on everything you guys have been doing in the past before making any moves on my own. That's fine. And if you do go to a tech meeting, it's nice just to get a report on, you know, what happened, what, what they're interested in, where the possible places for collaboration are. Yes. Nice to have a hand on the pulse of the other committees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I don't have much for heat pumps either. I have, um, you know, I'm still planning on, I'm, I've been following up on a number of different things with both Rewiring America and Heat Smart. I actually went to a Heat Smart meeting last Friday, but it was at 7.30 in the morning. So I hardly remember what happened because I was still asleep. But <laughs> but they're both very involved. Heat Smart is very involved in heat pump coaching all over Massachusetts. So this is relevant. Um, we can actually request, you can you can request a coach through them. For example, it's free service. They're they're just volunteers doing the work, and they do trainings just like Rewiring America does. So they're good to know about, good to to be involved in. Um, but I don't have any other. I'm waiting still to hear about the RFP from Stephanie during staff updates. Unless you want to say something now. No, I'll just save it for staff updates. So if there's not anything else on transportation or heat pumps, anyone have anything they want to add? And if not, we go on to the fun stuff. Ha! Sustainability festival planning. Actually, so I, you have the climate resilient schools first. Oh, oh. I, how did that get? Am I looking at the right? Did I copy the wrong? I don't know, but I the one that I sent you Oops. and the one that was in my packet should be climate resilient schools is number four. Because okay. we don't want to keep them waiting. No, of course not. Of course not. So. But it's uh, somehow it didn't copy when I copied it into my own notes. It's it's probably in the original. I just I copied this always into my notebook, and sometimes yep. No weird. Okay, well let's just go ahead and do it. Julian, um, um, I'm going to actually make okay. you a presenter, so just hang on one second. Okay. Great. Oh, we got a hand up there too. Yeah, it's Julian's. Great. Now we can see you. Perfect. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm going to screen share a slideshow. And if you want to bring uh, Sarah Ross into the room, uh, she'll definitely help answer questions. Sure. Well, okay, that's hold on. That'd be great. Just confirming that you all can see that. We yep. can. Awesome. And Sarah is in the room now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, my name is Julian Hines. For those who don't know me, um, I am the co-hub lead of Sunrise Amherst and one of the leaders on the Climate Resilient Schools Coalition. Um, and we will be presenting to you about our coalition, why we think you should get involved, ways you can get involved, all of that sort of thing. So I'll uh, start off with our first slide here, um, which is, who are we? So we are a coalition of multiple organizations, um, including Sunrise Amherst that I represent, um, Mothers Out Front, which is a local community uh, climate action group, um, Mass Audubon that does a lot of preservation and um, community engagement work um, in the area, including like land preservation and that sort of thing. Um, Mass 
uh, Amherst Climate Justice Alliance, which does um, climate justice work in the area um, and advocacy, uh, the Franklin County CPR, which is continuing the political revolution. Uh, they work on a variety of um, political and governmental issues. The Amherst Pellon Educators Association, otherwise known as the Amherst Teachers Union, um, for those in our schools, and uh, Undaunted K-12, which is the organization Sarah Ross is the co-founder and director of. Um, and that organization is our main co-sponsor, if you will. Um, so they work with us on, um, on organizing the meetings and answering questions and sending emails and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it provided us with some really awesome sample resolutions, uh, as well as other resources and support from that adult perspective, um, which is great. So thank you to Sarah Ross for all that. Um, so what is our purpose? Our purpose is to build a diverse coalition that empowers uh, both educators, students, and engaged community members, whether they be parents or climate activists or whoever, um, to engage uh, and catalyze a rigorous climate education curriculum and uh, infrastructure improvements in the schools um, by passing and implementing climate action resolutions um, at the district level and advocating for climate policy at the state level. Um, so what is a school board resolution? As you know, the Amherst has an Amherst school committee and a regional school committee. Um, and so they sort of take charge of the different schools. Um, but basically we would ideally bring a resolution forth that would um, basically and a formal expression of the board's position on something. And that can uh, allow or guide the district when they look to change uh, policies, budget, staffing. I know there's been discussion of uh, ARPA funds for a solar canopy and different um, funds for teaching staff and that sort of thing. Um, so this would all make sure that a climate lens is applied to that and applied to our capital requests. Amherst has a great system for making sure climate lens is applied to our capital requests um, now, and this would only reinforce that at the school level. Um, so basically, an example of this is the uh, Boulder school board resolution um, in Boulder, Colorado, which was organized by a bu bunch of um, high schoolers from the Sunrise Movement, um, as well as other activist groups um, in Boulder. Boulder is similarly to Amherst, a uh, small to medium-sized college town that um, values open space and has the university and has really strong schools. Um, and they did nine months of meetings um, and eight different board meetings pretty much spread across each month and ended up getting uh, 1,300 signatures in support of this um, to get uh, the school board to support it and pass it. Um, so then schools, this isn't the only uh, situation, schools across um, America are passing these um, all the way from Texas to California, um, Denver modeled after Boulder, uh, did that um, all the way even to Florida. Um, believe it or not, that is pretty impressive actually that they did that in Florida. Um, so yeah, um, lots of places are doing it. Unfortunately, it has yet to be done in Massachusetts. Um, we have not had a district in the state um, commit to uh, comprehensive um, climate action um, resolution or program in the school. Um, of course, as many of you may know, if you have kids in the schools, we do think about climate issues. Teachers um, incorporate it into their own curriculum and work with it that way. Um, and I'm sure the custodial staff also tries their best um, to think about it as well. Um, but there's no actual guide or um, district or statewide uh, legislation to guide these folks um, and give them uh, the exact knowledge to know what's best. Um, whether they be teachers or administrators or custodial staff, they're not also climate scientists. Um, and we want uh, to make sure they have the tools to uh, get on board and make sure that our schools are as climate um, friendly and resilient as they can be. So Massachusetts is, shall we say, behind the curve on this. Um, and that's why we're trying to change stuff here in Amherst. Um, so we're thinking about 
uh, food production systems in our cafeteria. Amherst has fabulous school gardens at the elementary level. We don't have that as much at the middle and high school level and the farm to table um, type programs in the schools have been reduced over time. So we that's sort of where we stand on food. Transportation, the district has invested in um, one electric bus and I believe is investing in a few more uh, electric vehicles, an electric maintenance van, and possibly an electric uh, disabled um, person's bus um, this year. Um, so we're making some progress there. We still have a long way to go. There's still a lot of diesel buses um, on the road. Um, green schoolyards, um, this can look like at the elementary level, um, playgrounds that are blending, blending in with the natural environment. I know there's been some discussion about that with the Conservation Commission um, recently in terms of we have a great opportunity with the new elementary school to build new green schoolyards, um, as well as a matter of like, how do we care for the grass outside the schools? Do we use toxic chemicals or do we use natural fertilizers? Do we plant trees around the schools? All those sort of questions. Um, and then also buildings. Um, this is key. I know there's been discussion of solar panels at the high school um, and it goes all the way from whether we want to or and have the funds to put solar panels at the high school um, or at any other school to um, really the fundamentals of how we're building a net zero elementary school which is pretty awesome we're digging um, for uh, geothermal as well as putting solar and so a lot's going into that as well um, and then it even goes down to just the regular day-to-day -day operations and maintenance are we leaving the lights on at night do we need to leave the lights on at night are we doing minimal heating um, during the right hours of the day when students aren't there um, how are the trash and recycling handled um, all those sort of day-to-day -day operations questions that um, are up to both the teachers and the maintenance people in our schools that we might not always have the resources to do, but others of them are pretty straightforward where we can just turn the lights off or whatever. Um, <laughs> so then uh, the other thing is curriculum, and this is the last slide, so I will stop talking and ask for questions after this, but the idea is we want to um, embody a curriculum that talks about climate education across all subjects. How can climate uh, issues apply in math? How can climate issues apply in writing? How can scientists best communicate um, that climate change is happening and what solutions are um, to the public? That it involves science. It also involves English and social studies skills, right? Um, so involving it across the curriculum, uh, making it a part of civic action projects. I was just on this Capitol Hill today um, in the state, Beacon Hill, um, to do some work around uh, civic action and making sure kids have the resources they need for civic action projects and that sort of thing. So it's really important that we make sure these that the resources are there for educators to provide that education um, on civics, on climate change, all that sort of thing, and then delving deep into it um, from an environmental level um, in the sciences and learning all about how different greenhouse gases work and calculating gigatons of carbon and all that sort of stuff that I learned in my AP environmental science class um, and making sure that's not just accessible to students who want to take that class or have the resources to take that class, but to make sure that all students can get some level of that education, no matter what school they're in or what grade they're in and that sort of thing. Um, so that, and then also professional development for teachers, making sure that the funds are there so that teachers can engage in the professional development, have the time to engage in the professional development, and also are given the resources so they don't have to dig into their own pockets. And then um, in addition, career pathways work. We have a office of guidance and college and career um, services at Amherst Regional High and trying to make sure kids know what green jobs are, what they do, um, so how some jobs require a degree, some jobs don't, what degree do they want to get, all these types of questions um, that engage in how they can be awesome public servants um, and engage in green jobs, even right here in the community. Stephanie's a great example. I know we have some awesome other folks in the sustainability, conservation, and public works departments who are also good models of this. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Um, 
and I will happily take questions and share them with uh, Sarah Voss, who's also here. And if you want, I'm just going to keep this slideshow open if we need to transition other slides for folks' questions. Yeah, this is really interesting. Before I before we take questions, let me just say that um, you know one of the things that if Dwayne is not here today, Dwayne Brezier, but um, one of the things that I'm sure he would point out is that uh, one of the stumbling blocks to getting electrification done, to doing the green energy transition, is uh, workforce. Um, that there aren't enough people who know how to do HVAC stuff. There aren't enough uh, skilled workers, skilled people who know how to do air conditioning. They do the number of we. Let's see, was this? That was at Heat Smart last week. We learned that in order to get an HVAC license, in order to get what you need to be a to install heat pumps, you need a number of different. There is no one HVAC um, certificate. You need to have um, separate sheet metal working uh, certificates and uh, plumbing and and uh, heat you know furnaces for different. There are all these different certifications you need to have, and it can take a decade to get them all. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know my uh, grandmother volunteers in the schools um, in Westfield with those types of programs. And one thing that Amherst could really work on is uh, getting programs for kids who are interested in those trades, interested yeah. in green job pathways, whether it be solar technicians or um, wastewater technicians solar, or tree wind, maintenance HVAC. workers or all HVAC technicians, all these type of people who um, might not require a college degree, but it certainly requires specialized training and can be a good unionized job um, yeah. for folks and trying to get uh, some resources so kids can explore that in their upperclassmen years of high school. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of really good opportunity there, you know, college degree or not. Um, and it's something that I don't think we, 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 folks don't know about it. <laughs> they don't know about the problem and until you try to have a heat pump installed and find there's a six month wait to get someone in their house. <laughs> you don't know if there's even a problem uh, or, you know, no, let's not even talk about uh, wind and solar installations. There's all sorts of need uh, for folks to do that. Um, so are there questions? If folks would raise their hand, I can uh, yeah. electronically, I can unmute you. Yeah, I saw Steve. Yeah, I, I couldn't find the button on my phone. Um, that's great work, Julian. This is, I'm Steve Roof. I'm a climate researcher and professor down the road at Hampshire College. And just last semester, I led a class of a bunch of students developing a new climate action plan for Hampshire College that encompasses many of the things that you've just described for the schools, which is, which is wonderful. So somewhat, I'd love that we could sit down and compare notes on the sort of things you guys are thinking about and the sort of things that we are trying to develop at the college. There's a lot of overlap. One of those areas is, is food systems. Um, food is recognized to be somewhere like 30 to 40 percent of greenhouse gas emissions are associated with food growing, production, um, processing, and then disposal. So we are looking into a particular program right now, something called Cool Foods, which is sponsored by it's coolfoods.org. And it's also sponsored by the World Resource Institute. And uh, they provide some tools to help you know, assess the carbon footprint of food systems and then provide alternatives to lower carbon footprint food systems. That's one that I'm really excited about. I'm trying to see if we can implement at the college. And I talked with a folk um, sustainability director over at Amherst College, and they are also interested in that and suggested, oh, maybe there's a way we could use the collective purchasing of the colleges and maybe the schools, the K-12 schools too, to um, get more local foods and uh, reduce carbon in, in carbon footprints that way. Yeah, no, um, I know. Question. I, yeah, good, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm just gonna add additional things. So say anything you have about the food aspect. Okay, yeah. Um, no, I was gonna say that there is uh, two Sunrise members who are actually really interested in this topic in the Amherst schools um, and food service within the schools. And I would most certainly be happy to meet with you. And I'd imagine they would be too. Uh, so feel free to reach out. You have my email or um, or the Sunrise uh, movement at gmail.com um, email and someone will myself or someone else will get back to you. And we'd be happy to meet at the school or have a cup of coffee or come over to Hampshire College, whatever. Yeah works for you because I think that's a great idea. That's great. 
have have you guys tried to do a greenhouse gas inventory of your school? Or we have. Yeah, actually, that's a, that's a really good point. We did something like that. Um, I did a report on it um, for specifically the greenhouse gas inventory for electricity consumption at our school. Um, and I did that as part of a group with four other Sunrise members for extra credit in my AP Environmental Science class. I have the research report and I would be happy to send it to you. Excellent, that's a wonderful exercise. Um, and it's a, it's a great way to learn about a lot of things and develop some math skills along the way. A absolutely. I'm glad that you've done that. And that yeah, would be part great. of a curriculum if it, mm -hmm. you're gonna create a curriculum, a module on calculating a greenhouse gas inventory, not just from electric, because that's fairly easy, but also gas, and then maybe also the scope three things like transportation. Yeah, we didn't bit. we didn't look into those scope three areas, but I can certainly send you the report. It's pretty it's pretty interesting. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Uh, I think transportation would be a great place to look next. Good work. <laughs> Thanks. Other questions? Input? So what else if, can, oh, if, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Laura Drucker, I was just going to say, if Laura Drucker was here, she would probably have a lot of nice things to say. Oh, Laura's here. Oh, okay. Laura snuck um, in. She's here. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry to put you on the spot. Held up on other work stuff. No, this, this sounds great. I, I missed the initial ask, I guess. So that would be my question. I did, but I didn't want to ask that because it's rude since I missed the beginning. No, don't, don't worry at all. Um, <laughs> Basically, we just wanted to educate you about what we're doing here. Um, and the ask is, A, would you consider joining our program um, and joining the Climate Resilient Schools Coalition? And the other ask is, uh, if any individual member is interested, you can join our Slack to see exactly what we're doing and so on and so forth. And you're welcome to chime in on that as well. Very cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And great slides. Thanks. Yeah, um, so for joining the coalition, I'm not sure what that means in terms of who we are. We're, we're um, you know, advisory group to the town and we could certainly support, you know, if there's a particular um, a petition or a report or a climate action plan that you want support for, uh, the way this would normally work is you would, I think, send that to us. We would look at it, maybe return some comments and then send a note uh, to whoever, you know, to you saying that we support it and maybe to the town council pointing out that we support this if needed. Um, I think that's how, how support would work. Um, I'm not sure of uh, how, what else? I mean, maybe Stephanie can, I, I don't think we usually uh, join coalitions like okay. that. Okay, got it. Really no, the town, I don't think the, the committee would be able to do that, but- but there, but again, you know, the support for specific initiatives for sure, um, and even the town might be able to get behind some of that. But we can talk about that offline another time. Yeah, definitely. No, individuals are totally welcome to join, and um, we haven't drafted the resolution itself yet. Um, we're having a meeting on it next week with the director of curriculum and a few school committee members. Um, if you guys would be welcome. Uh, to come. We haven't scheduled it yet. Um, but anyone who's interested is welcome to come to that. And that would sort of be the first step there um, to once we get a resolution, I could send it along and come back to one of your meetings. Yeah. So I think that's the thing to do. Keep us in the loop on all of that. And maybe, you know, it sounds like Steve is definitely interested. I'm interested. Um, if we can show up at a meeting, we will. I'm definitely fine joining a Slack channel. Um, Great. If I, if I know how to find it, I need to know how to get to you. <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, I've used Slack only a little bit. Sarah's uh, had her hand up for a long time. Sarah, yes, you have. I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Sarah. I don't need to stop any of this beautiful conversation that's going on. Um, Julian, thank you so much. That was like super impressive. It's easy to forget that you're a high school student. You know, <laughs> hearing you talk, I'm I'm having these conversations all all the time, and it's uh, it's like you're just one of the adults doing this work. So it's it's really impressive how you. Just gotten such a mastery of this. So thank you so much for the presentation. Yeah, just a quick word to say, I think, you know, one of the keys here is to move this work from the like extra credit students do the greenhouse gas inventory to institutionalizing it in the work of the school, right? Because that's, that's one of the big missing links. And, you know, you all have done a ton of great work on the municipal side, again, institutionalizing these commitments, 
sizing up the problem, thinking about pathways to get there. In our nonprofit, we see over and over again that there's this huge disconnect between municipalities that are leading on this stuff and the schools just kind of get left behind in their own domain, right? We see this again and again and again. So really this would be about um, leveraging you all as leaders, uh, domain experts in your own right that can help us shape a resolution and can really be, um, you know, trusted voices within the town, maybe to come to school community member meeting to, to talk about how, you know, the town has this commitment and it only makes sense that we will be mirroring those commitments in our school's commitments because we're not going to get to where we need to go without schools being a part of and fully embracing what you all have laid out, you know, uh, our charge in terms of, you know, needing our, meeting our, our town goals. So, um, we would really appreciate your support in in that way of kind of like the voice of ECAC and and reflecting the town commitments and then you know your um, thought partnership on the individual pieces. Uh, we think these resolutions can be really powerful. Basically, the arc that we're trying to excite here is like you get a school board to pass a resolution. Typically, in those resolutions, they make date certain commitments around you got to put together a committee to put together a plan by X date and report back to the school board about X, Y, Z. So it kind of embeds some accountability. So it's resolution creates a plan, plan then, you know, of course has implementation and deadlines for implementation. So that's the kind of chain of events that we're seeking to catalyze here with this resolution as the first step. And again, we've seen it be successful um, in these other cities across the country where they are now, you know, no kidding, spending money to electrify those buildings. And there is no question about, are we putting in a new gas boiler? Because, you know, the plan says no way, no how. Um, we don't have any of that teeth in our schools right now. We have aging HVAC systems. And unless we really get serious about this, my concern is that we will just do a good old like for like replacement and we will miss the yeah. chance for the next 30 years to get our buildings off of fossil fuel. So, we think this is urgent and we we thank you for your support. To I have a question for Stephanie. To what extent is, um, so within the town, uh, right, there is a process for, for um, uh, requisitions, right, that includes a climate lens. And for the most part, as things are replaced, they are not just replaced one for one. They're supposed to be, you know, upgraded to heat pumps to something that is more environmentally friendly. What is the situation with the schools when something happens in the school, is that not coming from the town budget and the town process, or is that coming from somewhere else? Um, so it depends on if we're talking about the elementary schools or the regional schools. It's different for the regional schools. Um, they they have a separate budget. Um, actually, the schools have a separate budget, but we are we do have our facilities manager who actually works more closely with the elementary schools because those kind of do somewhat fall more under our purview. Okay. So, um, you know, we we certainly have the schools identified as, you know, part of the municipal inventory. Like they're on our green communities inventory. That's what the, I thought. the regional schools are not. The high school okay. and the middle school are not. Okay, that's interesting. So, so, that's so the high difference. school and the middle school are the ones in particular that any resolution should address for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, yes, sorry, go ahead, go ahead Julian. No, I was just going to say that um, it's also a little bit uh, complicated just because our goal is to get the resolution to the regional school committee. So don't confuse that with the Amherst school committee because we're going after the regional school committee where we think the biggest impact can be had. And also don't be confused by the little trash containers with the stickers that say green community when you walk around the high school because the high school is not the same as the fields and all that that the town does that is part of green communities so it's a little complicated okay um okay and laura you had something yeah um i guess i had a question about why we wouldn't try to do it for both the regional and the amherst school committees I mean, I guess we would ideally like to do both. We just want to make the regional the priority because it's the place where A, the most work needs to be done, B, where the savings from um, climate resilient uh, infrastructure could be felt the most, and also 
sort of where the town doesn't have as much influence through Stephanie and the sustainability department. So I don't want to say we're not doing the elementary schools. We're just prioritizing the regional schools for those reasons. I think Laura, to some that's what I was just trying to get at with Stephanie. To some extent, the the schools, the elementary schools, are already covered in the CARP, right? But I, but they're, I don't know that this is happening. So just last week, my understanding is that CGL or whatever one of those groups from the committee is called, the council is called. There's a proposal to do an energy study on Crocker Farm, and I don't, I believe they were the folks presenting were specifically asked, have you talked to Stephanie about this? And the answer was no. Why would we do that? And then Sandy, the new finance or the new old finance person said, well, electric buildings are not cost effective. So we have a lot of work to do. Yikes. I didn't hear that. I, so can I wow. jump in real quick about that comment, Laura, because I don't want this to spin. Um, Sandy's here to help through the budget season. He's not here through... Um, He's not, he's not the new replacement. He's just here temporarily. And I don't think he may not be as aware of uh, the initiatives that we're, we have underway. So I, I would not get too alarmed. I'm, I work very closely with the facilities director um, and okay. I have something to announce later. So I'll, you know, I just don't want this to, to spin too far into something you know, it, I don't yeah. think that's going to No, happen. I'm not trying to spread rumors. Do you have a good relationship with Roy? So Roy, so um, Rupert Roy Clark is the facilities person for the schools, but he and Jeremiah, I, I do have communication with him at times. So, um, but the schools are, like I said, they are on our green communities. Uh, they're part of our green communities inventory. So we do like we got the schools their electric staff vehicle that came from us that wasn't something that the schools did so we do have some influence over that and i think it's just um we're going to have to have more conversations if that comment was made then we'll certainly have more conversations about the elementary schools and i yeah. have like i said i have something to announce uh as part of my staff update so this might actually cover some of that concern that that's great stephanie um the other thing I was just going to say was that obviously I wasn't at the meeting, but that sounds concerning um, what was said there. But the other thing I would say is I know we are doing a um, revamp um, of the energy systems at Crocker Farm, but there's also the capital requests that come in that when they're made in the region – it's different. They don't have the same requirements is my understanding. Whereas in the elementary school, every town department has to submit a fact sheet and ask, is this in, align in alignment with the CARP? And if not, why not, if it's applicable? Um, and I know some staff provide really good updates to it. Some don't as much, but um, the elementary schools are required to do that um, and have that list there. I don't think the regional schools are required to do the same thing or align it. If Am I correct, Stephanie? That is correct. So it sounds like the immediate goal is to have a resolution passed that will set up a task force or committee whose job it will be to put together a climate action plan for the regional schools at least, right? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, okay. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention about the process here that sort of surprised me, uh, coming from Maryland where every little community and county has um, development plans that are accepted and voted into place. They are, they become virtually law. I mean, they're accepted by the board. They're, they're, you know, hard and fast. Um, that wasn't the process here and it surprised me, but the more I look at the CARP and all we've done, the more it doesn't seem to matter. The CARP was never... Um, uh, accepted as a plan. It was, what was the word? It was, it was, it was accepted, accepted, not ado adopted or something like that. It was never adopted as a plan. It was just heard by the council and then accepted. We accept this report and, but it's been followed for the most part. So um, it's, it was a strange process, um, but in the end, I think a good one. So I don't know what the fate of whatever, you know, whatever, whatever um, report or, or action plan you come up with, um, it'll be there regardless of, you know, what the school board does with it or the school committee 
regional school committee does with it. If they see it and they hear it and it's there, they can't really ignore it. Um, so I hope you, I hope this gets done <laughs> and uh, we'll do what we can to help. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And I just want to also point out, use this time to say that I know the solar canopy over our um, is another region is another reason we want to prioritize the regional schools is just because that's been in discussions for a way to use ARPA funds. We might consider working with one of the outside partners um, with Amherst College or UMass or Hampshire, something like that. Um, so we really want to get that installed and try to get some funding for it because it would be an expensive item in the town's capital budget. Um, so we want to push for that as much as we can sort of in uh, coinciding with this at the regional level. Yeah, and that is something that ECAC supported. I believe we sent a note, it fortunately didn't get funded, but <laughs> we sent a note supporting the uh, solar canopy idea. I don't think that decision has been finalized. Hey, it hasn't oh. been finalized. I think it gets finalized by uh, the January 1st, 2025. I could be oh, wrong. I so, thought... The time is still now to keep the pressure on uh, Mr. Okay. Bockelman to do as much as he can with that. Um, okay, so if there's but, more yeah. we can do there, yes. let us know. Yeah. Yeah. If he decides that's how to spend ARPA funds, that would be fabulous. Okay. Stephanie? Just a point of clarification. So funds have to be committed by the end of 24. So, and that might be, Julian, your reference to January of 2025. That's what but, I meant, yeah. But yeah, by the end of 2024, funds need to be committed. So that's kind of the timeline. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit sooner. Um, decision making? Isn't there, is there a meeting coming up about that, Stephanie? About the ARPA funds? I'm not yeah. sure I can find out. I had thought there was um, maybe on the 18th, correct me if I'm wrong. I had I heard something about it. I don't want to. It would be a, a council meeting then? Yeah. Um, could you let us know? Yes, um, I can find out. Okay. I could conceivably uh, just go to that and hear what's going on. Yeah, I, I would probably plan to do the same and if they're discussing it get uh this coalition and sunrise to support as well yeah. all right any other questions or comments if not julian and sarah thank you very much really appreciate you being here and stay in touch um you know we'll follow up yeah, thanks for having us. I really appreciate it. Um, and I know the other members of Sunrise um, do as well. And we thank Stephanie and you for facilitating and helping us with this. Yeah, and keep in touch, Steve, for that. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> thank you so much, Julian. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next on the, now, now I think I copied the wrong agenda, Stephanie, so if I say the wrong thing, please correct me, but next I have Sustainability Festival and then ECAC Retreat, right? Yes, I think the rest of it is um, correct. I think you might have just had the version that I, that we worked on prior to Possibly. Julian confirming. Possibly. I'm not going to go back and look. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so the next thing is Sustainability Festival. I think this is fairly straightforward. I just wanted to get quick um input let me see if i can bring up my that everybody got the links i sent right uh, i see people have signed up for dishes to bring to the uh, retreat <laughs> and the other one was um let me just find it uh, wrong uh, one moment please i just want to see where we are for signing up for the festival um ECAC schedule, sustainability festival 24. Okay, good. So I see we've got Tony coming for quite a while in the morning. Yay. Um, I'll be there four hours. Steve will be there a couple hours. So there's a few, still a few slots we need to fill. And I may end up staying the whole day. I put myself down for four hours, but I'll probably come earlier than nine um, and help set up. And I might stay later, uh, depending on what's going on, how many people stop by the, uh, the heat pump booth. <laughs> Uh, and I think we discussed last time who was going to bring what. I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on this today. This will be more for the next meeting. 
when I think we'll be about two weeks out, right? Maybe three weeks out. So we'll try to pull everything together then. But from last time, um, let's see, we had a list from last time, which I closed of, um, no, nope, that's the wrong one. What was on that? Do you have the minutes in front of you, Stephanie? Uh, just give me one second. I closed it. Open minutes from 228. There it is. Uh, we had things like, just as a reminder, um, I'm going to bring a couple of tables. <clears throat> Setup starts at 8, but the festival starts at 10, goes to 4. I'm going to bring a bunch of table, two tables. Jesse's going to bring a sign for heat pump advice, five cents. <laughs> the doctor is in. <laughs> um, uh, so Laura, QR code link to edu. Ask what folks want to learn. So what was, what is that? Can you remind us what that is? Laura? Oh, I think that was just a QR code to the elect, uh, YouTube channel for the educational series. Oh, that's right. That's right. We were going to ask them what other educational series things they'd be interested in learning about. Okay, that's right. Thank you for the reminder. Um, that's a good idea. And we're going to bring a couple of computers to orient residents to the sustainability dashboard. Now, is that something who's going to provide the computers? Is that we should just bring our computers or is that something the town has a couple of laptops or... Uh, the town doesn't, but, you know, I, one or two of you could one. bring, I mean, yeah. you probably don't need more than two at the most. Okay. I can bring a laptop. So I'll bring something. If it's not raining, if it's raining out, I don't think I want my laptop out getting splashed. And <laughs> if it's a nice day, uh, we'll have laptops. Um, and I think that's, that we're set. I mean, we're going to have a lot of information there. We'll bring the usual, um, uh, I think asking people what they want to learn about, having heat pup advice right there, and maybe having QR codes for the usual things if anyone's interested. I don't see people using them a lot, but um, you know, QR codes to to um, last year, uh, things like Mass Save, you know, but Mass Save will be there, right? So hopefully, I don't know for sure. Um, yeah, to the dashboard, to Mass Save, to you know, other other folks we think ought to be there, or, or that folks ought to know about. I can put a bunch of those together. I think I still have last year's. Um, but we don't have a ECAC banner or anything like that, do we? No. Okay. Well, I think the heat pump thing that the, the booth that you're putting together, Jesse, will be enough of an eye catcher. That was the thing I felt was missing last year was some sort of a colorful something to get, you know, who the heck are these people? <laughs> Maybe, maybe, um, maybe uh, a banner. Hmm? I could try to incorporate that. Or, or I could just, you know, send a banner over to Sunrise Printing or whatever it's called. I use them for a lot of stuff and have them just printed. I can, I can just do that. I don't mind doing that. Um, if there's a particular logo that I should use, Stephanie, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just make something up. I can take care of that. I need to note um, where to go. All right. Anything else on the sustainability festival? The only thing I um, have is to continue to ask folks if they know of students who might like to do a demonstration project Steve especially you might have some students that might be interested in doing some kind of demo we have a demo area um, and uh, you know it can be agricultural students too like we've had some pretty cool ag demonstrations in the past um, we had a mycologist we had someone put together pollinator bombs which were just dirt with a bunch of seeds in them um, we had some folks do a demonstration on um, uh, having a home apiary. So we've had some really cool stuff. So it would really be great if we could get some of those types. I probably, I would say maybe we need, you know, 
four or five maximum through the day. They're just basically, they get like an hour to do something. And we do have a few, our DEI director wants to do something um, uh, like a visioning sort of session uh, at the event. So that's going to be pretty cool. So we just need like maybe three or four more. You should ask Dwayne. He may know students who can do this sort of thing too. Mm -hmm. I will also ask around. Okay. Um, all right, so next uh, we have the ECAC retreat. Um, so Stephanie should have sent, it did send a draft agenda for the retreat, um, which is very drafty. <laughs> Um, it was sort of deliberately so, uh, to leave time for things that might take more or less time than we thought they would. Uh, so for example, Laura, you sent me quite a lot of slides, which will probably take more than 20 minutes to get through. <laughs> um, but I was going to encourage you to get through the background and history a little quickly and maybe focus on, I mean, what, I, what I've been noticing, I've been going through the cart myself the last few days. I feel like after a couple of years on this committee, I'm finally starting to figure out what's been going on and where things are. It takes a while to get it all under your belt, right? <laughs> to understand where things have been coming and going. And I'm actually sort of amazed to see all of the things that were in the CARP, that are in the CARP, that are being done or have been done or are being planned. Um, we're really marching through it. You know, we're not, yeah, the greenhouse gases aren't coming down as fast as we thought, but the CARP even says that we knew this was, this 2025 goal was ambitious, right? but we feel it's, it's important to push um, because nothing gets started, right? You have to get started. And if you don't have that push, you don't get started. And, and we have been marching through a lot of these things. So I think what's really interesting to me is you know, where those goals are and what's been done and what's left to do. You know, what are the important things that, that haven't been touched yet? And there are some of them, I think in transportation in, and there's a bunch of things where we haven't really gotten started yet. Um, so, you know, where, where are the things that, that need to be pushed on next? Um, and where are the opportunities for interacting with outside groups? So that's something that I forgot to put. I apologize. That was something that came up last time. I just saw it on the minutes that we needed a little section to talk about what is the lay of the land outside of, um, ECAC, you know, who else is doing this work in the area? So I think what we should do is probably do that as part of the discussion of opportunity, sort of after after Laura talks a little bit about the background and goes through slides on you know the carp and what the goals were and where things are where things stand. Um, I think the idea is to have Stephanie then talk about what's been going on at the town level, get a little bit of insight there to how things work and what's going on. And then under the opportunities discussion, let's everybody try to bring with you, you know what outside groups have you been participating with? Or, um, or what what opportunities are you aware of? You know, over the over the years, I've also seen. I mean, I think the most recent one, um, Laura, you had a recent opportunity that you brought to ECAC, and I'm drawing a blank on it right now. Um, but it connected to one of the goals. I noticed as I was reading through it, connected to one of the CARP goals pretty nicely. So you know, if you know of outside, either organizations that are working on something that shows up in the CARP that shows up that, that we need to be doing it, you know, that's the time. I think this discussion of opportunities before lunch, before, before the break rather, is sort of the time to do that. Let's get all this stuff on the table and see what's out there. What are the outside organizations? What are the outside opportunities um, that we should be connecting to or knowing about? And then after we get everything out, <laughs> try to try to focus it down again, try to shuffle the cards into some sort of piles and, and see where it, where they land. Does that make sense? So I guess my ask is for everybody to think about what are the outside organizations you've been involved with and what are the um, outside opportunities you might know about? Go ahead, Laura. Um, can you give what's the purpose of the outside organizations? Um, well, for example, uh, I don't know until I know the organization, right? But 
uh, Heat Smart provides heat pump um, uh, coaching, right? So if we're gonna have this RFP and this heat pump program, it's just one more thing that we should be aware of and maybe funneling people to. Um, we should at least know about them. They also offer heat pump coach training if anybody's interested in that, right? Um, there's this, the schools, the coalition that we just heard about today, right? Um, that is something we should at least know about and keep our finger on the pulse of so that we can support them when they need it, you know, at the moment when they come to us with uh, a proposal, right? So th that's the sort of thing I'm thinking about. Um, it may also be that, and this is something I wouldn't want to do without consulting Stephanie, but it may also be that there is a group that is in a position to apply for grants to maybe fill in some of the holes in the CARP, right? Um, and maybe that's something we want to work more closely with, but that would have to, of course, involve. Yeah, I guess, I guess what I'm thinking is that it's hard to, I think we need to, some of this stuff, I think we need to discuss during the retreat, right? Like it's hard. I think we need to know where, so we know where our focus has been over the past few years mm -hmm. and we need to kind of talk about where we think there are holes that aren't, being filled that we could help fill, right? And then we need to figure out what organizations are. So like, it almost feels like we probably won't be able to get that information ahead, okay. of, but that would be like a good action item after the retreat. I still think it doesn't hurt to hear about what else is out there because people might not know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of organizations that I didn't know about um, coming into this that, that I think it, it it would just be good to get the names out. It just it just a few minutes of, you know, what other organizations have you been involved with and what do they do? Uh, doesn't that make we don't have to try to do anything with it. It just might it might just give us some ideas, right? How are other places dealing with this, that, or the other thing? You know, it, it, that's that's all. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but I do think it's worth going through that. I don't remember who suggested that last time, but I. I thought it was a good suggestion. Um, just to talk a little bit about that, and and, and not in a. I, I see what you're saying, Laura. We we should focus on our own. What do we want to be doing, and um, and where are the opportunities there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a bit chicken and egg. I, I think we could yeah. go. It's, it's, it's a bit chicken way. and egg. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because you don't really know uh, who can help until you know they exist, right? So, yeah. Um, but that's just the overall discussion of opportunities. I'm just hoping come come with your ideas, your you know where where you think the opportunities are, or, or one one outside organization, one opportunity, one grant thing you've heard of, even if it's not something we're going to pursue, but it might be interesting. You know, it, um, it it might be nice to know about all of these and sort of just just get them on a, on the table somewhere. And then the second half of the meeting is going to be, well, the, the end of the, the way I envision it is the end of the first half of the meeting is going to be trying to narrow this down into a few categories, say four, right? <laughs> and then, and then spend time in, in, in breakouts where, you know, for the first uh, 20 minutes, we talk about, we break into two groups. It talks about two of the categories and then two groups talk about two more of the cat categories. And then we come back and we all you know, make summaries and wrap up. And I'll have some, if nothing else, right? If no, if no other categories come up, we'll use the CARP. Um, CARP has, uh, is it five sections or six? It's five, I think, right? With building it with governance. If we leave governance out, it's, it's, it's four, I think. Or did I miss one? No, you're right. One, two, three, four, right. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, without governance and communications, it's buildings, renewable energy, land use and transportation. And then there's governance and communication, which is sort of overarching and, and does have the outreach and collaboration part of it with partners, with external partners. So if nothing else, we'll divide it up that way. Um, but I think I, I may have other ideas too, and you may too, uh, by the time Sunday rolls around. Cause like I say, I've been going through the carp and just trying to 
put some of the things I've been hearing about opportunities together with some of the things I see in the CARP that haven't been approached yet. And if, you know, if, if anyone else does that or finds an opportunity or two that they think would work, then that's probably something we should focus on. You know, if you already have an idea for a project. And Stephanie, have you sent out the uh, links to the, does everyone have access to the CARP at this point? I, I think, think everybody has access to it or has it, but um, I haven't resent anything because I was waiting for this meeting to just finalize what it is. I'll send stuff out tomorrow. Okay. I was just waiting. All right. But the agenda had to be posted. So that's already. It's that's already done. I did that. Yeah. yeah. Are the, does the town have any, um, hard copies of the climate action plan? Um, no, we tend not to print those things out anymore. We're really trying to go with much less paper. Yeah. So it's all, huh. everything's pretty much mostly electronic. Even our permitting and stuff is, <laughs> it's all going digital. Yeah. Less paper is a good thing. More servers <laughs> are not. It is a good thing, but it's, much easier to get distracted with Facebook or Twitter if you're online than if you're <laughs> looking at a looking at a piece of paper. Um, but all right, uh, let's see. So that's just what I was thinking. A question, two part question about item number two, the icebreaker. Um, oh yeah. If I if I were to send out an assignment Excellent. ahead of time <laughs> am i the first question is am i allowed to do that yeah i was going to say jesse i hope you'll do the icebreaker um and and then laura of course we didn't put names on this but laura you're that that section in the middle right you, you know where you go and uh i'll leave it up to you how much of that you want to talk about i just wanted to talk a little more about how i thought this was going to go so that we're all on the same page um but those slides are are uh very um, thorough. <laughs> There's a lot in there. Yeah, I mean, I think there, I'll go through them very quickly. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new here. Yeah, this is exactly what we presented to the town right two years ago. So I think yeah. it's important for people to see what we presented to the town council. Um, and then I'll turn it back over to Stephanie and you to talk about where we are since this presentation. Okay. And I and I asked Stephanie to uh, Stephanie when you send out the agenda, do send a link to the CARP and also to the um, the annual report that we presented just a few months ago that has the town manager goals in it. So I won't feel obliged to like go over the town manager goals or something like that, but we'll have them all um, in front of us. I do, think we should, mm -hmm. I do think it would be helpful, Steph, uh, Lori, to summarize what's yeah. in. I can do that. Report and put it in the slide deck. And I'm going to. I can give the summary that I gave to the council. It's it's like five minutes. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and I think, and I, I think there's the town manager goals that we suggested. And then there's the actual town manager goals that got approved, right? Those are different things. Oh, so I don't I'm going to just copy in thing. the text from what the climate action goals were for the town manager, just so we have it all in one place. Yeah, I don't know where that, I don't even have that. Do you have the final town manager goals? I don't think I have it. They're yes. online. Yeah, I'm sure they are. <laughs> I just, I haven't looked, uh, unfortunately. So um, I can, I can find them, I guess. No, if, I've already if, done it. Don't, you don't need okay. to find them. I'm putting it okay, in. Okay, good. Or so if you, you just want to send them to me so I can put everything out as a packet. Yeah. I'll send you these. Yeah. And Lori, anything that you have, I just want to send everything at once. Yep. That's fine. That's just the, those three things. Um, you, you can send that if you want, you can send the summary uh, that I, that I also put in a packet at some point. I think I gave a summary yeah. to the town council a few months ago and wrote up a little, you know, paragraph so that I wouldn't, get lost. Yep. Um, I think I have it, but I just want to make sure I have the right one. Yeah. There's one change I need to make to it that was corrected <laughs> dealing with the, um, uh, what was it? There was a, a, 
financial and grant thing that didn't actually happen. Oh, the bank, the climate bank goal, which we sort of retracted until such time as the state gets its act together, which they still haven't as far as I can tell. Um, all right. I'm making a little highlight for myself here. Oops, that's the wrong play. Just, just to be clear, Stephanie, if I am, I am allowed to send out an assignment as far as for the for the icebreaker, like a little thought exercise. Well, can you send planter. it to me? Unless you have something specific you need to say with it, Jesse. If you could send it to me, so it could be part of the whole retreat packet. I mean, you can when, add something, you know, if there's language you want me to include to everybody, just when you send me the email with whatever it is the icebreaker is and you want to say something about it, include that in the email and I'll cut and paste it into. No, it just packet. it could just be a, a document. Okay. Yeah. Just so when, we have everything the, at once. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, well, when, when are it, you going to have it ready? <laughs> this is the question. Before I go to sleep tonight. Okay. Tomorrow's great. Tomorrow. Wait, and knowing that you're sending something, I'll wait until I have it before I send everything out. Okay, you'll have it soonly. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, one other question. Uh, did uh, Stephanie, do you know, I never, I think I was gonna call and I never did. You don't know if Monson Library has a projector or screen, right? No, I didn't ask. I thought okay. you had something. So I, I, I do if I need to bring it, but I will call them and ask um, tomorrow morning. I'll call because I'll I'll check in with our IT department. Okay, because I, I just thought I, you had it, so I I, I do follow yeah, up. A bit of a pain to drag around. So if if we need a projector and a screen, I'll bring the ones I have. Um, but it's a big old clunky projector. It's it's big, <laughs> and I have a, I have a I have a portable a little one projector. No, it's this big. Oh, it's just cool. not. It's not as bright. I uh, have a fantastic projector. I will provide and bring. Okay, I'll bring the screen then. <laughs> Tony, so you I went. don't know. We, we should call. <laughs> we should call to be sure. And if we don't need it, I'll I'll let you know, Tony. No, just bring it. Just bring I'll it. Bring it just bring it. Yeah. It's okay. usually they don't. Usually it's IT provides these things, and that's it means I lug it, and it's usually you know they're not always the smallest, greatest. Um, Tony, do you have a screen too, or I, I, have I do not have the screen. Okay, so Lori, you'll bring the screen, and Tony, you'll bring the projector. I'll bring the adapt, adapt the adapters necessary for it for different computer types as well. Yep, I also have a collection of adapters that goes everywhere my computer goes. <laughs> Big baggy full of adapters. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so I have that. I have that. Notes for myself. And I think that brings us back to the next, anything else on that agenda item? If not, the next thing is the ECAC education series planning. This was the request that we have a uh, discussion of community solar and community owned solar um, and how that works. And is there somebody, does any, Stephanie, were you gonna, did you have someone who knows about that or? Um, Dwayne actually does, and we might Dwayne. wanna, I could reach out to him. Okay, I can reach out to him too. I'll do that. Okay, I'll, sure, I'll that. great, thank you. Um. I'm also going to try to pick Steve Bright's brain about that a little bit because he's the one who seemed to think it works differently than my understanding. At any rate, um, I'll, I'll reach out to a couple of people. All right. So that leaves us to the next agenda item, which is the staff updates. And Stephanie's been sitting on her hands there trying to. <laughs> I have a lot of I have a lot of things, but I won't. So. I'm going to mention some things, but I'm going to save some of the conversations for Sunday because okay, I cool. think some of this is relevant for Sunday. Okay. So first thing, I just want to follow up from the conversation last time about the work that was going on 
at the Amherst Police Department with the roof work. I spoke to the building commissioner. I spoke to the facilities manager, Jeremiah. Um, they were very cognizant of not putting the insulation on the roof because it was going to be $100,000 to put an exterior. Um, nope, don't roll your eyes yet. Not done. <laughs> um, to put an exterior because it's a metal, there's a metal roofing, it's metal sheeting, sheathing. And then, so there's metal sheathing then, and this is the exterior metal sheathing, then the plywood. Um, it was going to be a hundred thousand dollars to put in any kind of rigid, um, insulation on the outside. What they decided was it would be easier and better to insulate it from the inside. So they're going to insulate it from the inside. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to share that piece. So, um, Hopefully that will alleviate concerns. I think they they knew what they were doing. They had discussed it. They had investigated it. That right. they just came up to it wasn't going to be worth another hundred thousand dollars for. I wasn't going to do a whole lot if they put it on the exterior. So there's that. Um, go ahead, Jesse. Quick follow up. I, I'm I'm not surprised that they had thought about it. It's and I'm glad to hear that. Um, is that part of the project or that's a that's going but to be I another assume... that's going to be another project where and this will be part of what I'm going to get to in a in a little bit. Okay. So um so that I just wanted to follow up about that. So um and then the grant that I couldn't announce last time is we got $15,000 for a meta grant to do um a study on town hall to do a engineering study where we're going to focus because it's not a lot of money. We're going to focus as much as we can on the building, but we're really going to aim towards looking at the roof and the attic space of town hall. That's just like, it's just like open space right now. There's no insulation up there. I mean, there's some insulation on the roof, you know, sort of at the lower portion, but it's not much. So um, it's a really challenging space. There's a lot of scaffolding in there. It's like not, it's not going to be easy for someone to just come in and lay in insulation. It's just a very, very complicated old um, structure and very, very challenging thing to do. It's going to be expensive. <laughs> um, I think I've already told you that the roof needs to be replaced. So that is going to be upwards of a million dollars to replace the roof of town hall. Um so that's going to be, so what we're kind of focused on right now is the Meta Grant will do the study. Um, then we have some energy efficiency community block grant funds. If you recall, we got sort of a, a block grant of $76,440 that was just like a pot of funding that we didn't have to apply for. We're just getting it. Um, we're going to be using that for the insulation of the attic space of town hall. So we're going to try to focus on this sort of, because this has always been one of the challenges. I think the rest of the building will be easier once we get this piece done. This has always been the biggest challenge. Like for years, I've been talking about insulating the roof. And for years, I've just been told it's too much. We can't do it. It's too complicated. But now we're going to really try to tackle it. So uh, that's that's going to be hopefully moving forward or will be moving forward because we'll get the mega grant, mega grant study and then we'll use the EECBG funds for um, for weatherization and insulation. Um, the heat pump RFP real quick, um, I've sent it to procurement. They had sent it, uh, asked me a few questions about getting town manager approval for something about its release. The details don't really totally matter, honestly. Um, but that's all now sitting with procurement. Um, she just has a whole, I mean, it's one person who deals with all the procurement for the entire town. So, or all the municipal side of the town. Um, and she is drowning in work. And so she will get to it. She did tell me it's definitely in the queue. So it's coming. Um, could be even by the end of this week or next early next week that it'll, the great. RFP will get released. So that's coming. Um, let's see. I did interviews for a fellow for this summer position. Uh, a reminder, we're going to have someone come in to do a fleet greenhouse gas emissions inventory and transition timeline. So that's going to be done by the summer. What I love about getting fellows is I feel like, ah, I know I'll have a product by the end. <laughs> so um, three candidates, one really particularly good one. They're, they're all good, but the 
there's one that I'm just crossing my fingers. I'm really hoping that she will agree to work with us because another community wanted her. She's super sharp and she'd be fantastic. Um, so waiting to hear whether we get her. Um, Valley Bike is relaunching this season. Um, we've got a new vendor that we're working with, so that's moving forward. It is requiring me to ask for some operations funding. It is not inexpensive. Just the town's portion of operations for um, projecting out to next year, 25 and 26, is roughly going to be like $82,000. That's just the town's portion, but what will offset that will be some revenue. So memberships, advertising, sponsorships, those things will probably bring that cost down, but we just don't know what that is yet. So that's the full amount. So I've actually made a request in the budget for that full amount because I want to make sure it gets covered and we don't get caught. Um, and then the last thing that I'm probably the most excited about is you may have heard that um, the department um, of Energy Resources, the Mass Department of Energy Resources, has come up with a new program, a Climate Leader Communities Program. And that program will allow us to um, have expanded funding beyond just the Green Communities funding. It's like will allow us to, to request more funding because Green Communities is actually very limited. I don't know if people are aware, but like the cap has been typically like 200,000, which sounds like a lot and it gets us some work, but doesn't get us to some of these really bigger things. It doesn't completely cover things. So this will get us expanded opportunities for funding, technical assistance and some other things. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we'll be able to apply. Uh, I, I'm going to a webinar about it tomorrow. So I don't know if we're going to be able to apply. There are, uh, I think, six criteria. We have four out of the six, and we're about to do the two last. So I don't know if they have to be completed before. So one of them is um, a zero emissions vehicle uh, policy, a purchase policy. So I'm hoping that'll be part of when we do the GHG inventory, we'll be able to do some kind of a updated policy so that our purchases are for um, electric vehicles to replace, you know, as vehicles go out, electric vehicles come in. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to be able to sort of push that forward. Um, the other thing though, is that there's um, a requirement for a decarbonization plan. This is like the big thing that we've been sort of needing to do, but it's kind of a monster. And I'm really excited because I think I reported out and um, Duane might have as well, that we had some students from UMass come out, Ben Wiles class, um, students came out and did some work on inventorying some of our um, HVAC systems. And this was part of the work that Miguel did, Miguel did but um, they were specifically looking at very specific buildings and um, sort of creating a, an inventory as well for the town that would go on Mass Energy Insight, which is the um, state's data source for all of the municipalities to put in their energy information. So it's what I use for my green communities reporting. I update it every year with, you know, uh, all of our fuel use, electricity use is automatically added, gas is automatically added. Um, but this decarbonization plan, what I'm excited about is that UMass um, and Ben and Laura Madison are going to actually be working with us to develop our decarbonization plan. So the state was offering technical assistance, but you had to apply for it because UMass wanted to do this work. They've already done part of the work with us already. Um, they offered to work with us and another community so doing that technical assistance so we don't have to apply for it. And I can't tell you how happy it makes me not to have to apply for yet another thing. So we're just automatically going to be able to work with them. So it's great. Like I just, so we can, like, I don't have to wait. I don't have to apply. Like we can just start working on that piece with, um, in conjunction with UMass. So that's everything that I have. It's a lot. Wow. <laughs> That's that's amazing. I, I'd love to help with that last one too, if there's any way for me to do that. Um, that's that's just great. Um, uh, is there anything ECAC needs to do with that, with any of those? I don't know. I think some of that we can save for the retreat. Like okay. that's, I think what I was talking about is like yeah. some of this stuff is more planning and we can 
I don't I don't even know yet exactly what what that'll entail. So uh, it may not be. I mean, I think right now the heat pump program is going to be one of the biggest things that if you all yeah. are going to help out, it, we're going to really need help with that. You know, it really feels a little bit like we've been and I'm sure Laura maybe even feels more like this and 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 Steve who've been on this committee and Don who've been on this committee a long time, right? That that we've been pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and almost nothing has been happening. There's little things have been happening. And then uh, you're right, this year it feels like everything's starting to give. Um, everything's starting to move. Is that is that just me or is that actually happening? Well, I will tell you, I will answer that for you actually, because you all are coming to these meetings and we're talking about all these things, but behind the scenes, there's a whole lot of meetings and a whole lot of communication and a whole lot of things that have to come to come into place. This yeah. is actually stuff that I'm going to talk about. So yeah. I think that's a good segue again to the things that we can talk about um, at the retreat because, oh. you know, what, and I think that's where, you know, the community members may feel, sit and feel frustrated, like nothing ever happens in town. I'm working. <laughs> we're yeah. all working no, and we're doing no. a lot, but it's just that it, I think, you know, government moves slowly. We all know this. It moves really, really slow, but, but then things slowly. come together and all of a sudden yeah. it's just, you know, we have a bunch of changing, things. It's not just government, right? It's changing the way people think about things and the way people think about what their future is going to look like. And it feels to me like in a lot of places that's, this is the year things are starting to move a little bit. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm more hopeful than I've been in a while. Still expecting the end of the world, but <laughs> hopeful. <laughs> hopeful to at least try. I don't know um, that Amherst is going to solve that, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think Stephanie's been working her butt off. Yeah. And yeah. Everything that has happened is as a result of Stephanie's extremely I, work. Yes. Exactly. I still feel frustrated yeah. that I don't know if from our my perspective i still feel like she's not completely supported by the rest of the town hall staff but i know that's not her perspective right. but that's my perspective um and i think our town staff as a whole are way overworked and understaffed and there's lots of issues with that that are impacting you know, this yeah. and many 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 other things yeah that's not I, something I, we can say I, that I keep for the reminding myself that, <laughs> i keep reminding myself that we are a very small town i mean we we heard about boulder Colorado and being compared to Boulder, Colorado. Boulder, Colorado has a hundred thousand people. It has a national lab. It has, <laughs> it has, you know, it's on the outskirts of Denver. It is a much larger town than Amherst. It sounds like it's not much larger, but their population is more, it's not all students. I mean, we're mostly students. I think that's not. what people don't understand that our population is 36,000 with students. Yeah. <laughs> so we are, we are a small town. Um, any rate, uh, all right. Uh, what else is on the agenda? Let's see, where are we? ECM, um, ECAC member updates. Uh, yes, okay. Any updates? Go ahead, Steve. <clears throat> I just wanted to share that the um, there's a survey, the, the Massachusetts Commission on Energy Infrastructure Siting and Permitting is a, it's a commission that was established by the governor back in September. They are conducting a public input survey and it closes on March 15th. So it just, if you wanna read it and do it, it's uh, the deadline's coming up pretty quick. What's interesting about it is this is so far, the, the survey is sort of the only place that they have revealed the kinds of things that they are thinking about as possible changes. So they are looking at changes to, um, sorry, let me just bring up my, my crib sheet here. Um, questions about how Massachusetts can balance the need to accelerate deployment of clean energy um, while protecting the environment and maintaining community input. So it's a whole series of ideas that they're seeking feedback on. They emphasize over and over that none of these have been decided on, but they are throwing out, providing some ideas and seeking comments. Um, so. I will send the links to Stephanie, and if people are interested, they can do the survey. Um, one of the links is for a PDF document that simply lists all the prompts with these descriptions of ideas that are under consideration. So even if you don't do the survey, it's interesting to read about the kinds of things that they are considering. Um, so I encourage people to take a look at that, and if you are so inclined, read it. 
get your thoughts submitted by March 15th, a couple of days from today. Thanks, Steve. That sounds great. That sounds great. Any other updates? No, if not, I don't really have anything this week that I didn't say last week. So um, items for the next meeting agenda. Hmm. Do that. Let's see. Uh, well, we definitely want to circle around back to the education series. Hopefully I'll have some names. Um, otherwise, why don't we see what comes up at the retreat and then Stephanie and I will hammer out the agenda the way we usually do. Is there anything that we should absolutely include? that anyone can think of? If not, then let's, let's Stephanie, you and I do that after the retreat of our usual meeting. And public comments, but I think we have no attendees. So um, I think that brings us to adjourning till Sunday. So see everyone on Sunday. Right. I just have a quick oh, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, there's all sorts of things about food I saw on your list. Are there other categories um, that, you know, like drinks, something to drink? Sure. Um, if you want to bring something to drink, just add it there. Food. That's a drink. That's a food. If you want to bring, uh, oh, napkins and plates. You know what? I have a whole bag, uh, a whole box of party supplies that are plastic and, and metal silverware so that I don't throw out a lot of paper. And being that this is ECAC, why don't I just bring it? <laughs> and then we'll just throw the dirties in a separate box and I'll take them all home and wash them at home. Sound good? All right, Thanks, I will bring Lorraine. my party box. I bought that years ago for another group I was participating in that was throwing out so much paper I just couldn't stomach it. So... <laughs> I'll bring the party box. I'll have all the, so I'll have everything except possibly paper napkins. So if someone wants to bring napkins or a roll of, roll of uh, one roll of, uh, of paper towel is acceptable, I think. <laughs> so paper napkins or paper towels. If someone wants to bring that just to get on the list. And cups. If someone brings drinks, maybe cups. you can. Okay. I have the cups. Yep, all it's right, all in the party pack. <laughs> You're so prepared. <laughs> I haven't had occasion to take it out in a long time and it's for like two dozen people at least. So there's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Green party supplies there. In that case, I will see you all on Sunday. Thank you all so much. Take care. See you Sunday. And thank you.